Hello everyone, this is a presentation for the Siani webinar on deagrarianization on 5th of May 2020. My name is Flora Haidu and I will present on my research in South Africa that has been going on for almost 20 years now and where I have data from 2002 and 2016 from two rural villages in Eastern Cape Province from a coastal region called Pondoland. And uh, this presentation title highlights some of the findings. Uh, Deagrarianization in rural Eastern Cape, abandonment of field farming, but intensification of vegetable gardening. Findings from a 14-year research project in rural Pondoland. This research project was funded by the Swedish Research Council, FORMAS, and the research team consisted of me as project leader, Stefan Granlund as PhD student, David Neves, a South African colleague from PLAS at University of Western Cape, and who is also taking part in this webinar, and Tessa Hochfeld, a colleague from University of Johannesburg, who, however, very sadly has passed away last year. Some of the data I will present here today will soon be published with Journal of Southern African Studies, and another article on the effects of the child grant has been submitted. The project itself focused mainly on effects of the child support grant that was introduced in late 2002 in these villages. And the main research question of the project was, have households that have received more child support grant income improved their livelihoods and gained productive assets compared to those that received less? But to answer this research question, we gathered extensive data on rural livelihoods in the two villages through a survey of every household. This survey in 2016 was a, to a large extent the same survey as I performed in the village in 2002. Through long ethnographical presence, living in the villages for several months and coming back many times, complemented with many interviews, that we were able to design a survey that we believe captures very accurately the local situations. So the results of the survey of livelihoods that I will present soon uh, was actually sort of a byproduct from looking at the effects of this child support grant. Very briefly, I will just show a map of the study area. The two villages, Ntwini and Manteku, are close to the ocean, where Manteku is right by the sea and Ntwini is two to three kilometers away. As you will see, Ntwini is a bit larger. It is the top picture here. And it's also a betterment village where forced removals to this grid pattern settlement happened in the mid-1960s. Residents in Manteku were also moved to be closer to the road that was built to the sea, but there was less forced removals and less grid-like settlement. Utwini has better grazing land while Manteku has better fishing opportunities, uh, but both had bad roads, no piped water, and they got electricity only about 2013. In terms of household characteristics, Ntwini is a bit larger with 918 people in 2016 compared to Manteku's 608 and uh, this is divided by 174 versus 99 households in Ntwini and Manteku. Um, Ntwini has thus smaller household sizes and is generally a bit less traditional, if I can use that concept, with more nuclear families living alone than before with some bachelors who are building their own homesteads without being married and women who are moving away from their parents to stay alone with their children. Manteku doesn't really have those tendencies. It still consists of larger families with several generations and no really bachelors or single households. Very few households have moved into the village since 2002, so even though new households have been built when many people move away from their parents, and, mm, this is essentially the same population in 2002 and 2016, excluding, of course, births, deaths, and in and out migration within households. Mm, now, while most households report better food security and better households today than in 2002, many are worried about um, the fact that local employment opportunities have gone down quite significantly, especially in Manteku. Actually, about 35% of households in both villages report that their situation was worse than in 2002 which is a, quite a significant amount. So as you can see here in the chart, social grants in this period has increased a lot, especially the old age pension and the child support grant. And um, this is to an extent makes up for the lost, lost jobs. But we have to remember that most of these grants are, are very little money.
This is a breakdown of the relative value of different household livelihood activities to an average village household in 2002 and 2006. Sorry for the bit crammed slide, but I wanted to show you everything on the same slide. So the different activities contribution to total livelihoods have been added together for the whole village and then divided to make an average. As you can see, local employment, this green field, has shrunk a lot. And um, while grants, orange field, has increased a lot. Cultivation in fields and gardens, the dark green sliver here, uh, has shrunk from contributing 5% of total livelihoods down to 2 to 3% between 2016 to 2002. While the contribution of livestock pig pigs and poultry, the dark purple sliver, has shrunk from um, 9 to 6% and six to five percent respectively. So it is important to remember talking about deagrarianization that agricultural livelihoods were not that important even 15 years ago uh, so that they are a minor part of local livelihoods. Looking specifically at horticultural we can then see that gardening has decreased but not terribly much. Many households still have gardens uh, Manteca is hillier and has less available land for gardening though. We can also see that the average number of crops and fruit trees have not dropped dramatically. But field agriculture, that is planting of staple crops on larger fields of half a hectare to two hectares about, have been abandoned to a large extent. Reasons are that people no longer find it economically viable to grow staple crops considering high prices of inputs, high environmental risks and low cost of buying staple crops. I believe others in this session will talk more about the reasons behind abandoning of field farming. Some others in this webinar, I'm sure, will go into uh, a lot of interesting details on those reasons. Um, uh, a result is that people grow less of their own maize and vegetable consumption, as you can see in these bottom rows. Um, but as you can see also, it was already low in 2002. In our analysis of the impacts of livelihoods on livelihoods of receiving child support grant, we could see that there was a positive correlation between receiving child grant and having certain productive assets, as well as keeping chicken, geese, pigs, and growing a higher variety of crops. These are animals that women control to a high extent, and it is almost, also almost exclusively women who receive the child grant. While there was no correlation between uh, more uh, expensive things, we could also show a negative correlation between getting this uh, small amount of money every month and growing staple crops that are available at very cheap prices today from large-scale producers. So this higher variety of crops is generally gardening and planting of different vegetables for home consumption or for small-scale sa sale within the village. For example, like on this picture, where pensions and grants are delivered to the village and people sell uh, homegrown things along the side of the road on those days. On this graph you can see what people spend grant money on and as you can see even though there are plenty of other things that people need this money for more than half of those who receive grants claim that they do invest some of the money in cultivation uh, in this middle of middle column there, 57% in both villages. So um, is cultivation a worthwhile activity then? Many people in the village claim that uh, cultivation of staple crops in larger field is not worthwhile and I think others in this seminar also have similar experiences. However, gardening is another story. Even though most villagers just engage in a little gardening, this quote shows that there's, there are those for whom planting is an important livelihood strategy. Indeed, as food prices have gone up and vegetables have become expensive, we calculated in 2016 that a good harvest from normal-sized vegetable garden could earn about 10,000 rand a year, which is not very much less than the size of the pension. However, many informants point out that this depends on access to good soil, good weather, the presence of fencing, and the lack of various wild animals that don't really care about fencing, such as mo moles and monkeys. So this means that the opportunity to earn income from cultivation is heavily dependent on several factors converging to make it worthwhile.
Now, in the literature, quotes from older people about how the current generation of today is too lazy to farm. Well, they abound, and this is a common view also in these villages. We have, however, seen that there are many real problems facing farmers today, and um, there's a slightly different view from this man in his 40s who feels that he has spent a lot of his life farming. He's saying, it's not like we've been planting out of enjoyment. We had to plant because we had no more money at that time. We had to rely on planting for food. So now when we have money, we feel like we're free from that. And I'm asking him, what about the next generation? And he says, maybe they will plant because they have not had an opportunity to use the soil because they grew up when their parents were not planting. Maybe they want to know what it feels like to go and harvest your own crops from your own garden. Yes, he says, the next generation will plant. They will feel it is fun. So, just to quickly summarize then, our comparison of detailed data between 2002 and 2016 in two rural villages in South Africa tell a tale of both increased prosperity and increased food security, but also of decline and of lost job opportunities. There has been a major loss of local job opportunities, which have been compensated to an extent by increasing grants, um, but field cultivation of staple crops has been almost entirely abandoned while there is a tendency to keep farming vegetable gardens, especially if soils, fences and other important factors are there. Also, a few households are more engaged in vegetable farming and seem to make a good profit from it, and grant incomes help them to do this. Cultivation is becoming a specialization for some, rather than a staple livelihood strategy for everyone. Thank you. Looking forward to the seminar.